What's up guys, I got a brand new video for you today and today we're shooting with the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra versus the Sony a7 IV. I do this every year with the iPhone and I did it with the uh, S22 last year. So let's see what we can get. All right, so because it's not sunny today, we had to make it look this way. So we've got the Godox 600D with the gel on it bouncing off this. And then we've got the Source 4 up there to give us like a nice harsh sunlight. And I think it looks pretty good. So my inspiration for this shoot is based around 1980s Vogue Gucci fashion. And this video is specifically gonna just focus on portrait mode on the S23 Ultra because I like to see how close I can get it to a real camera. And I feel like Samsung probably has the best portrait mode in the business right now. And we're gonna find out in this video. So we're getting all the green. I'm gonna get your belt in this shot too. So three, two, one, hold that. Three, two, one. I think I would like a good looking off hard to your left more and then chin down a little more. Yeah. Okay, hold that. Three, two, one. The flamingo struggling. <laughs> Maybe just on this like lower edge here. I like that. Okay. So we're in the telephoto lens here. Here we go. Three, two, one. Hold that. It's interesting how the Samsung's like doing color here. Like your lipstick is pink in this one for some reason. Her actual makeup is that color. Weird. Even the sweater is like a completely different type of pink or orange, like it's like a pinkish orange. You'll notice throughout this video that the white balance varies differently between these two cameras, and especially on the S23 Ultra, but when I edited them side by side, they look almost exactly the same. Now, when it comes to the camera system on this phone, it's very similar to the S22, but we have seen a big upgrade on the main camera. It's now 200 megapixels from the old 108 megapixels, which was already pretty crazy. And that's at f1.7. The ultra wide is 12 megapixels, f2.2. The 3X telephoto is f2.4. And that 10X telephoto is f4.9. And it also has this crazy 100 times digital zoom called space zoom. And you can take pictures of the moon, but we're not gonna do that in this video. Three, two, one, hold that. Three, two, one, hold that. I need more shots where I'm like getting some really good shallow depth of field because obviously we don't have the depth in the studio. Mm, more towards like Milo, should like turn, yeah, right about there. I wanna see the edge of your eye, that's good. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. I want to get that belt too. I think I want to be on this angle. And then, yeah, and then looking off out to your right again. I kind of like when you look into camera actually and then kept your head tilt off to the right of it. Yeah. Here we go. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Boom. one looking into the camera. Chin down a little more. I want more of like like that type of a vibe, yeah. Yep, perfect. Three, two, one, hold that. Yeah, that's dope. I kind of liked when you had your hand up like in here somewhere. So hold that. Three, two, one. Nice. Get the camera. Boom. So 
So while you're in portrait mode live, you can change a couple different settings like high key mono, which is just black and white. You have a few other options to cut the person out of the background, very similar to what you can do on the iPhone. And I just left it in studio mode because it kind of has a cool background blur, but it also changes the lighting on the face just to give it a little bit more punch. And you can also change the effect strength as well. I left it at three because I felt like that looked the most natural to like an F2.8 lens that I was using on my Sony a7 IV. And you can also change the effect after the fact, after you've taken the image. And the cool thing is you can also change the focus point too. So if it wasn't where you wanted it to be, you can change that after the fact. So up until now, I haven't really commented on the image quality or even how well it's doing at isolating the subject from the background. I only really commented on the weird white balance issues I was having. And in this image here, you can see the skin tone is very similar. And if we zoom in here and take a look at the overall skin texture, you can see it's quite a bit more detailed on the Sony, which makes sense because it's 33 megapixels versus 12 megapixels. And I'm going to zoom in even closer here. And now I'm at 300%. You can see where the skin detail is quite a bit better on this image. And like I said, it's 33 megapixels. It's not doing computational photography where this is trying to piece all of this together. And it still looks really good. And if you're going to display this on social media, you wouldn't even notice the difference. I just wanted to show this up close so you actually can see the difference in detail. And if we go down to the hair here, it's pretty cool that it's leaving some strands in here. Obviously, this is a easier scenario for it because it's on a white backdrop. But overall, it's been doing a really good job and I'm pretty impressed with it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Maybe bring your uh, left leg back up so it's foot, flat foot. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So three, two, one, hold that. Three, two, one, boom. That is epic. Yeah, oh the stairs are pretty cool too, right? I Okay, how long can you hold that pose? Do you want me to switch? Okay, ready? I like the looking straight ahead at your knees. Yeah, three, two, one, hold that. Three, two, one, boom. That's fun. These aren't very good portrait shots though. So let's flip back around. Two, one, hold that. So framed up like that. Three, two, one, boom. Overall, I'm super impressed with everything we got from the S23 Ultra. I wouldn't say it's any better than the S22 Ultra from what I can remember when we shot with that last year, but I do think that Samsung has really nailed the AI in processing with their portrait mode images, especially when it comes to skin tone. We aren't getting any crazy over sharpening like the Pixel 7 Pro does. And I noticed that they're even improving some of the lighting on the face when you have it in studio mode. Overall, I think that if you're going to use this phone for portrait mode, you're going to be really impressed with it. And I didn't even touch on any of the other aspects of this crazy camera system, like the 50 megapixel raw images you can get, or even the crazy 200 megapixel JPEGs you can get from the main camera. All right, thanks for watching the video. That was the S23 Ultra versus the a7 IV. Thanks to everybody involved. I hope you liked it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. See you guys in the next one. That was speed. Sometimes, like, I don't know, the outfit makes me, <laughs> makes me a different person. <laughs> How was it to get into that? This is I wonder if we should try that instead of... Whoa! <laughs> I forgot that the next zoom is crazy. Yeah, let's try that. So you know on an iPhone how you pull down exposure like this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On this, it switches to the front facing camera. So I'm like, hi. <laughs> but we can add a ladder to the pose. Can you hold this for a second? Yeah, sure. but your, I bet your phone doesn't do this. <gasps> oh, we can uh, scroll through the photos with our little pen here. Dirty sausages. <laughs> <laughs>